Come here, Daisy. Good morning. We woke up in Wisconsin, a little west of Milwaukee on I-94. Now we got to go through Milwaukee down to Racine, Wa I almost called Washington again, Racine, Wisconsin. Unload our freight, go down to Illinois, I believe. I still haven't gotten confirmation on that next load. I was told I'll be going down to Illinois, grabbing a load going to Ontario, but that hasn't been confirmed yet. Well, it's empty and we're gonna have to clean it out before we get to our next customer. We gotta go all the way down to Arthur, Illinois and that's about four and a half hours away. So we'll stop on the way. I gotta get a coffee anyways. We'll clean this out on the way. You can never leave your trailer like this though. Just saying, okay? Before you unhook and leave it somewhere, make sure it's swept out and clean, everything put away. So we're not gonna leave it like this, okay? Just for a bit, we gotta get out of this parking lot here. Got to get out of everyone else's way here. I'm not in the way right now, but they're going to be finished soon, and then I will be in the way, so I don't got the time to sweep it out and stuff here. Not a big deal. As long as you always remember, clean it out. Sweep it out. Always. Even if it doesn't look like it needs sweeping, just give it a quick sweep. Do something. Always remember, try to leave everything better than you found it. And if you found it super clean, return it super clean. Okay, moral of the story. Okay, we're going to Arthur, Illinois now. Let's hit the highway. I need to find a coffee somewhere and breakfast. I haven't eaten yet. Let's get going. We're all locked in. This way, I do believe. A new message has arrived. So I just got my, uh, you have oh, I'm still in driving. Seven minutes of remaining drive time. Pulled over here because I had gotten a message just as I pulled out. And I wanted some water. Mm. So I figured it was best to just stop here and figure out what they wanted. So I have a new load coming out of uh, uh, Arthur, Illinois into Ontario, just like I said. I'll take you off my head so we can talk face to face. I have a big mark here now, don't I? from the camera, that's why I wear this. Now you know. <laughs> so, when Arthur and I have eight drops, it starts in London, Ontario, and ends off in Dorval, Quebec, which I think is around Ottawa. I go through Ottawa and end off in Dorval, Quebec. So it, it should be good, I get paid for each of those drops. So these loads usually pay pretty well. I get paid for the miles to go there, plus each drop. Uh, it turns out to be uh, quite a fair, quite a fair payment, I think. I like it anyways, I'm happy with it. So let's go pick up our load and start meandering our way towards the Canadian border. We're gonna be crossing from Detroit, Michigan to Windsor, Ontario. 
see, just real quickly here. I want to find out how far away is London, Ontario. There's so many Londons. London, Ontario, how far away is it from Arthur, Illinois? Arthur makes me think of that cartoon of that little moose guy. You guys remember that, Arthur? What's his theme song again? I used to always have it in my head. I better not think of it or it'll be in my head again. Oh, it's only 871 kilometers. That's not even that far. That's, uh, let's do the math for my American friends. You wonderful people and your weird systems of measurement. Divided by 1.61, 540.9, 541 miles. That's just a day of driving. Cool, so we got time, we got time. Look at this beautiful picture. Look at this, look, I gotta show this to you, look at this. Look at that beautiful picture on my background. That gives me motivation to get home. Okay, let's get out of here. Diesel, you good? All right, cool. Hang on, bud. We're going this way. And then that way. And then back over that way. <laughs> Where'd you come from, buddy? Always look twice, guys. Look twice, look twice. Snuck up on me. So this is Racine, Wisconsin. I know at least one of you lived here because I read your comment saying that this is your hometown. It's very nice. It's not even fall here yet. Look at these trees. They're all perfectly green except for those ones. They're dead. In 600 Look at that. Meters, turn right on Rapids Drive. So I wonder if I'm passing by your place. Diesel, what do you think? Very nice town, eh? We could have stayed here for night, but I didn't know, right? I didn't know. All I knew is it was between Milwaukee and Kenosha. So I, I don't know what neighborhoods to avoid. All I know is that at night, sometimes, uh, sometimes you just don't want to be there. <laughs> Say that. Things get a little too peaceful for me. Right on Rapids Drive. What do you think, Diesel? Karen's telling me to go this way. You okay with that? You're the navigator, man. Kind of a tight corner here. Yikes. Here we go. No way around there. Didn't even hit the curb. Like a boss. Like a boss. And I gotta turn left right away, so I'm gonna stay in the left lane. Judge me, I don't care. Holy smokeronies, man. There's a dog over there. There's a dog. A real one, man. I saw him, Diesel. He's not on a leash either. He's a very good boy. I know, right? Risky. At a truck stop, at the fuel pumps, with trucks moving all around here. Very busy truck stop. Doesn't have his dog on a leash. Diesel, I love you. But it's because I love you that I would never let that happen with you. When there's moving trucks all around here, he is on the leash. It's for his own safety and my peace of mind. I was just letting his dog run around all the trucks here. Trucks are backing up, driving all over the place, parking, fueling. But nothing happened. So like Diesel said, he's a very good boy. Good thing. Time to go clean out the trailer. We gotta get this done before we drop it.
remember I told you last time, you guys got to hold on tighter than that. You hear this? The emergency line's got some leaks. First thing you do, if it don't work, whack it with a hammer. Maybe don't whack it, just tap it. Just try to get it even on there. That doesn't sound like it's working. I can still hear it leaking. Okay, so what you do next after that, don't hit that thing too hard. Like just tap it, just try to get these two circles, the seals, just, I was just trying to get them lined up properly, right? Don't go, I was just joking, don't go and whack it, all right? <laughs> Your shop is gonna get very mad at you. <laughs> don't do that. All right, so what you do then, pull that out so that it's not charged anymore. Okay, and you go back out here. Can you see? Maybe I should move you over a little bit. How about that? That's better, eh? All right, you take it off. You check the seals. You can see here what the problem was. You see that seal in there? That seal is not gonna seal if it's sucked in there. Not good, okay. Now it's on there. Check the glad hand. Oh, this one's doing the same thing. You see that? Pull that out of there. Come on now. That's hard to do with one hand. All right, pull that out of there. There you go, see? That should seal a lot better. Now sometimes it still doesn't seal properly, even though you fixed the rings. Sometimes you still can't get a seal. I'll tell you a little trick. It works best in something, doesn't work as good in really cold weather, but you can give it a shot. It, it always works for me. If you still can't get a proper seal, and this is just a little bit old, you don't have a replacement one on you, put a little spit on it. Okay, this, this probably sounded like much better advice before the sickness, but uh, it works. Put a little spit on it, and wipe it around on it, make it wet, okay? You don't want to use spit, maybe you can use some, some water. I've never tried water, but spit's always worked. All right, if it doesn't work after you whack it with a hammer, spit on it. Trucker Josh, a wealth of knowledge. <laughs> okay, uh, you, you spread that around and it actually seals it better. It's worked every time for me, but we're not gonna do that now. Let's see if this fixes the problem just by fixing the seal. All right, let's see. Let's see. Gonna, gonna make sure it's properly lined up. Okay. We're gonna recharge the brakes again. And that did it. Okay. So all we had to do was realign those seals. That worked. No spit necessary today. No more leaks. All good. So let's do the rest of our pre-trip here on the trailer. Make sure that all the lights work and that the tires are filled with air and have no holes in them. You can see the signal here. And marker light working. Fantastico. Kick the tires just to make sure that they have air in them, that they're not deflated or flat as some might say. Marker light here is on. ABS light is off. Fantastic. All right. Signals work. Wait for the truck to put on the brake lights. Come on. There they are, brake lights. 
the other side is good too. So last time I showed you this, some of you asked, how do I get the brake lights to come on like that? It's actually a feature on these Peterbilts that we have. You push a little button on the dashboard and it circle, circulates or circles, it cycles, cycles through the lights all around the truck and trailer. It shows you if the high beams are working, low beams, signals, marker lights, brake lights. It does all that for you. So as you walk around, all you got to do is just look at all the lights. You don't have to, you know, pin the brake down or anything. It does it for you. It's a nice feature on these new trucks. You see, it does it with the, the high beams here, then it turns off the high beams as well and the signals. Makes it a lot easier for us. All right, boys and girls, we're ready to rock. Let's just do our quick little tug test here. Spike the brakes. The trailer is attached and is not going to fall off. Okay. Here we go. We're all sealed up. Pull it out of here without bumping another trailer. And we're headed towards uh, Windsor, Ontario and Detroit. Won't make it there tonight. We only got another three hours and seven minutes available to us. See how far we get. One kilometer, turn left on I-0133. It's a beautiful night though. Perfect temperature to go trucking. Tell you what. A lot of Amish people around this area. I'm gonna let you know. I think it'd be cool to spend like a week on an Amish farm. Oh, Amish farm. Amish. Amish. <laughs> It'll be fun. What an interesting lifestyle, right? Horses diesel. You see that? All of the stores here in town also have Amish parking for their horses. Not sure if you'll be able to see it here or not. But they all have this, uh, what do you call it again? That little uh, post, like here, on the right there. You see it over there? There's a horse tied up right there in front of Dollar General. That's awesome. I'm serious. I, I think the Amish sort of are onto something, you know? I think they're onto something. There's more over here. A simple lifestyle. And you know, when everything goes up in smoke, the Amish aren't even gonna really notice. They'll be just fine. Totally self-sufficient. They don't use electricity. They don't use fossil fuels for the most part. At least most of them don't. They, they ride around a horse and buggy. I mean, when the oil runs out, the Amish are gonna be laughing because we're all gonna be running to them for help. <laughs> pretty cool and pretty neat communities. They're actually cousins of ours. My longtime viewers know that. Uh, I have Mennonite heritage. The Amish are sort of distant cousins of ours. We branch off from the same peoples way back when. They're sort of like uh, our extremists, you know? Here's some more coming up on the on the right here. I like to just slowly glide past them so I don't spook the horses, but I think these horses are pretty much impossible to spook at this, at this point, you know? They're so used to it. Oh, who's that diesel? Isn't that cool? I know, we need to get one of those. There's actually a new, pretty large Amish colony that uh, has been set up not too far away from us, just south of Steinbeck. Uh, they came from Southern Ontario. I guess their colonies there were branching out and a whole bunch of them moved out to Manitoba. So they have a big colony around Vita. And you can always tell if it's an Amish farm because there's no electric lines leading to the houses or buildings. They don't use electricity, like I was saying. It's Continue interesting lifestyle. Yeah, we got a whole bunch of them in our region now, and they're very good, very hardworking people. Well, Diesel? That's it for today. I guess it's time to hang the hat up, not put the hat back on. 
that's it for today. We went about another hour down the road to a town called Champagne, I believe. Let me just double check for you. Where am I? Hey. Hey. Somebody tell me where I am. Champagne, yep. Champagne, Illinois. We're at a little truck stop here uh, called, uh, it's a Road Ranger. Uh, it's at exit, what is this? Exit 240 on I-57. I'm going to spend the night here tonight and uh, continue tomorrow. So if you did like the video, the best way you can help me, if you feel like it, is like the video, leave a comment down below, engage with the video. That way YouTube recommends it to more new people. If you are new, subscribe to the channel so that you don't miss the next video. We make a video every day. Tomorrow will be another one as we head towards Detroit and Windsor, Ontario, Canada. Anything else you want to add, Diesel? There's a dog, bang. I think it's a dog. It might be a rat. I'm not sure. I don't know, maybe he's a cat. Maybe he's a rat. He's really weird. This this guy got out of his truck here, and uh, he had two what looked like piglets. Diesel thinks they're rats or cats. I th I, they, they did look like rats, sort of, but I think that they were piglets. I think he had two piglets. He was walking around right out in front of the truck here. I, was, I, I couldn't tell what they were. Well, he wasn't that far away either. All right. Turn the other guy just running, and they followed him everywhere, like a bunch of ducklings. <laughs> it's the funniest thing ever. And he tossed him onto the ground like a cat, like from waist level. He was carrying him, and he just tossed him on the ground. They landed on their feet, and just. I have no idea what that was, Diesel. But Diesel was very, very concerned. See, I am not going to sleep now, man. I need to know what that was. You see the sweat? It could be a threat, Diesel. I don't know. You have to figure that out yourself. That's your job, right? That's what they pay you the big bucks for. Yes, those big, big bucks, yes. Man, we we spoil you, man. We get you the uh, high quality food. We get you daily supplements, salmon oil. Yeah, yeah, I know, I know. <laughs> You're a spoiled pup. You do a good job, man. So uh, let's let's call it a night here. This video is probably getting pretty long already. You guys have had a smudge on you this whole time. There's a fingerprint right there. Right. Don't mind me. I'm just gonna wash you off there like your mother would. You filthy, filthy. There you go. There you go. Nice and clean. Okay. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. And I'll see you tomorrow.